Paul, can you tell me a little bit about uh, U.S. citizens and their relationship with time, especially when it comes to meetings and, and how that might be different from other cultures? Okay. Americans in general are extremely, extremely impatient. I can't emphasize that enough. That means you should always be on time, if not get to a meeting a few minutes early. Because since, since there's a long line of potential competitors behind you, if you're late, that gives the person you're potentially meeting with a reason to say, up oh, next in line. As far as the progression of the meeting goes and when a meeting ends, follow the lead of the person you're meeting with. Americans will tend to start looking at their watches or the clock on the wall when they've lost interest. When an American loses interest, you need to do the work to get them to get refocused and become interested again. Do not assume that they will do that on their own. In many cases, that, uh, the American you're meeting with will do that to test you to see how serious you are and how committed you are to working with them. So view it as a game and a test, but definitely show up early and you should be the one, since you requested the meeting, you should be the one to say thank you for when time's up, thank you for your time. I appreciate you taking your time to meet with me and here are some suggested next steps. Do you agree? Do not wait for the person you're meeting with to say time's up because if they're put in that position, you may not get another meeting with them. Yep, and there's this concept too of, you know, when the meeting starts, let's say at 11 o'clock and it's supposed to be for 30 minutes, you can say, hey, Paul, you know, thanks for your time today. You know, we've got 30 minutes. I just want to check. Do you have a hard stop at 1130? You know, and yes. you're kind of asking, hey, do you have a meeting you have to go to after this? And it gives them an opportunity at the beginning of the meeting to say, you know, I do have a hard stop and actually I got to, you know, make my lunch or I got to, you know, go to the bathroom or take a bio break before the next meeting. So could we stop at 1125 or something? So then you yeah, know if you have less time. And hard stop in the U.S. literally means that's the time when my participation in the meeting will end. It's not a request for the meeting to end then. It's not um, a, a general social comment. It's something very real, which leads into something else Americans will all, often do when, they're, when they've been asked to participate in a meeting. An American will often ask a colleague, if not an executive assistant, to come into the meeting at a certain time. That will be prearranged. And that might, the, the request for that person to come into the meeting will be at a time be, before the time the meeting's to end, because that will give the meeting taker an out if they want to stop the meeting. So you know if, if somebody else comes in the meeting and says, hey, there's something urgent, if the person you're meeting with says, no, I have to continue with this meeting, they're interested. If they say they need to get out of there to go to something else, you need to say something like, I hope everything goes well, I will follow up with you. And then they're out of there. So when a, an American says something directly, believe it. Don't try to read anything into it. I think that's great advice, Paul. And, uh, you know, if assuming nobody comes into the meeting to interrupt them, but you know they have a hard stop, five minutes before that hard stop or the end of the meeting, shift to talking about next steps and trying to schedule the next meeting. And, hey, let's look at our calendars while we're here to find a time next Tuesday. Uh, you know, as a, it saves like seven emails back and forth. It can help move the, the project uh, forward.